So you're probably wondering, how am I threading this? Well, first of all, you thread it just like you do your normal tension. Follow your directions on how you thread your machine. And that's what I'm going to do right now. So with this one, I'm trying to do this without too much of a problem here. This is a, what do they call this? This is a, um, smartphone, so just to let you know. So I'm going to follow my steps. That's one, two, three, four. Lower my presser foot down so I can get a little bit of tension. Okay. I've got to thread it only because my automatic thread cutter after I don't know how many years I've had this sewing machine. It was one of my first computerized sewing machines, by the way. Years and years, my automatic thread threader doesn't thread anymore. But, you know, it's nothing that I can't do by myself with a pair of glasses. Let's take a look. So let me get my bifocals on. I'm going to get a few things to help me. I'm hoping you can all see what I'm doing. And then I'm going to thread it as best as I can. I have multiple skull ropes, so I tend to wobble a lot and tend to kind of not be able to see what I'm doing. It's not good when you wobble a lot. Okay, see, it's coming out already. I already stuck my finger earlier. Okay, come on, Thread. You can do it, Joan. It's really hard to thread this with a... I have a needle threader, but I'm going to buy that other one that I've seen. I've seen it somewhere. Okay, so... Okay, so that's done. So I wound up my bobbin, and when I bought the sewing machine, I used to have a lot of bobbin, bobbins, but moving and such, I lost a lot of them. So down there, I love about the sewing machine, um, this is the, sec the first time I'm using it for this particular type of um, free motion. So with this sewing machine, clockwise, your bobbin, place it in your bobbin clockwise, and then there's a little groove on the side. You follow that groove and clap, clamp it in, and it should go smoothly. Don't overwind your Pratt sewing machine due to the fast, it'll get too, and then it won't want to go through. They're very sensitive, highly sensitive machines. Snap. Okay, you heard that. So I'm going to bring in my thread because this is an older sewing machine. Pull my bobbin up, thread up. Pick up my presser foot. Bring in the thread. And what did I do? I didn't do that right. Okay, let's do it again. Bring my bobbin thread up. Pick it up. There you go. Got it. This doesn't have an automatic, you know, thread puller upper and all that like these new modern sewing machines have. So it just brings you back to the basics. So I'm going to trim that off just a wee bit. Okay. This is the flint quilt frame. And I'm only using two of the rods. So I'm going to close up my little door and then swing my other little utility door that has all the utilities and feet in there and voila now what I really want to show you is this little leveler back here this little leveler if you were to do that you will not be able to free motion 
there is actually a little thing you have to do, and that's pull it toward the back. And now, oops, okay, pull it towards the back, and now it's on free motion style. There's a notch over here. So if you read your directions, you'll know how to do that. Okay, so now that's threaded. Let's see if I can pull that carefully. There we go. I'm in. Let me trim off the thread that I had earlier. And the only reason why I had to stop is because my bobbin ran out of thread. Now I'm going to put my camera back more. And show you some free motion. Okay, so I finished that one. I'm gonna go back some. Let me move the roller. Good. Double checking. Everything's good. Yes, indeed. Okay. This is going to be a free motion. There you go. There we go. Okay. My light also went out several years ago. So, again, I need to take this to the shop. I, this has never been in the shop. Okay, now let me turn the light on. I think we can see a little better. So, my foot pedal's on the floor. I do not have to bring the thread up. But I just want to double sh show you. On the side here is a notch. So, I have to make sure that this is on the notch. You can see it because the, the it's floating. So I have some diagrams here that I'm going to kind of like follow through. I kind of draw my diagrams of what I want to do and then I'll place it on the side. Let's see, what do I want to do? I, I think I've done all these already, actually. Let me just do something totally on my own. Okay. So I'm going to start right in the middle, and I'm going to hold my hands on the rail, and make sure this is on slow, and I can't slow it any more than that. Okay, I'm going to get my, my embroidery scissors that has a curve. So I get you right underneath there. I'm gonna do just a swirl.
This one has diagonal lines. Let's follow those lines. Starburst. This is all new to me. Um, I always kind of look for inspiration with whatever I'm looking at. Okay, here we go. I'll let you know about that in a minute. Hold on. Probably one day. What is she talking about? I'm echoing. It's a little different than a starburst. It's almost like a flower that I'm trying to create. Echo. 
this one in my camera. What I'm doing is just doing some loop de loops. Just to fill in those gaps because, like I said, everything is new to me. I love about this is it already has a walking foot. Done. Okay, now I've got to lift up my get the let's see one of the cones. This is what I'm using to roll up and around underneath the frame, which is called a I forget what it's called, but there's the look of it. That's the other one here. It's a simple frame made by Flint Quilt Frame. I'm not getting paid from this. So I'm not sponsoring it. But I'm actually telling you how wonderful letting you know. I apologize. No offense to anybody. How I just enjoy using the Quilt Flynn. Let's see if it's here somewhere. It's the Flint Quilt. Let's get a good look at the name. That's $149. It's a little investment. Um, so that's all done. I'm going to trim the threads. Trim the threads bottom and the top. I have to loosen the sides on both ends. Roll it up and I'm actually almost finished. So let me pour that down. Like everything's reflecting. I forgot I have my magnifying glasses <laughs> Okay, so let me Loosen it up, it goes that way. It goes away from you. So loosen the sides up, going that way. I even marked it on my on my flint. On this edge, you do the opposite. You loosen it going towards you. Okay. Now you take here. Let me get this a little more situated here. Make sure that the PC that, um, piping is, everything is um, nice and lined up. So these are the lead sticks. So you have to remove the safety pins. Whatever you use, I don't know what you're using. You could have a more sophisticated way of doing it. But this is how I do it. And if you notice, I had to add some straps because it wasn't long enough for my, for the quilt quilt loom. So now that it's loosened, I get it with my hands and then I grab it here and I slowly start moving it. And you have to make sure that you don't hit the side of your needle. So I got about an inch away from, an inch away, keep maybe two inches away just to be on the safe side. There we 
go. Now I'm going to tighten it. Which goes away from me on both ends. Tighten it this way. I have it marked here. T goes down. So I'm going towards me. And then on this end, you want to make sure your, pipe, your PC pipe doesn't fall off. I've got that on this end too. And then I am tightening up, pulling it away from me. Hold on, it's falling. See, I'm tightening it up here. Now I'm going to tighten up the knobs on both ends. And that's the next. Now I'm going to place the lead sticks back on. Be careful not to. I use safety pins because that works just right for me. I don't know what anybody else uses, but it works for me. Let me do that again. You want a nice tight grip. There. I'm going to do the same to the other. Pull that in. Safety pin. That's one side. The other side. I use safety pins, they work really good. And then pull that. Safety pin. Tight. And then I'm careful not to sew anything beyond that. Okay. And now I am ready to start a little sewing. And you always go towards your right. You start at your left, but you always go towards your right. You wouldn't want to go this way. To, you wouldn't want to start from right to left. You want to start from left, going all the way to the right. And That's an everyday thing for five years, and it gets louder as she gets drunker. Okay, so again, this machine is called a Pratt. I'm no longer a Pulgarin. I need to erase that. It's a Creative 1471. It's an older model. I've got my threads. Remember, this is the early computerized sewing machine. If you look on yours, there's a needle on zero, 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 which is going away from you. Then you have O1. You can utilize these stitches. I'm using two, and it's working just perfectly for me. Okay? That's why I said number two. And here are, here is the how it automatically adjusts, then you have to adjust your tension. I have it on, let's see, I can't really see what that is. Let me open this up. Number 
between I have it between five and four and it's working just just right. So I hope that helped you. Make sure if you're using this flint quilt that you have ample space for yourself. Okay, oops, I dropped my handkerchief over there. I have my um, foot pedal there. I have a trash can. I have my other sewing machines. As you can see, they're all over the place thread that you're going to be using. I have a computerized sewing machine as well and I have two other ones, three actually stored. And there's my grandmother's sewing, uh, metal sewing machine which is down there and you use foot pedal only, foot power, pow, foot power, foot power. And then here's another 120 year old sewing machine but I converted it to an electric sewing machine. And it's on my um, table. You're probably wondering what this is here. Well, for some reason, whoever had this had a, I don't know what they used this for. Maybe because they were using it as a bobbin winder. I really don't. But there's a huge nail that I have tried so hard desperately to come out, but it won't come out. So, well, anyway, that's there. And that's the another 120 year old sewing machine and then I have an 1890 sewing machine in storage which I'm going to try to sell so that's it make sure you have plenty of room so if you want to watch TV you might need a, another table for whatever I'm just I'm drilling something and cleaning up things so make sure you have plenty of room because this will go way over there. So you have to keep an eye on what you're doing because you don't want to accidentally hit your, your lights or anything. But this is an ingenious way of creating a free motion on your quilts. It's so another way of saving yourself money if you can't afford these beautiful other quilt frames. Um, and another thing that I like about my prep is I want you to see, which really surprised me, I can take that pretty far, see? But you need to be careful. You don't want to damage your machine by getting too close to that. I cannot do this, this close on this particular one because it is longer here. And this one here is a lot shorter if you can see. Oops, my camera fell again. Hold on. It's actually my smartphone, but it keeps falling. And you could see this is much shorter in distance from here to here versus the Juki, which is five inches tall. This is only three inches tall. I have more tallness here than I have on that one. I hope this helped you. Please give me a thumbs up or a like, share. I'm not getting paid to show you how to use the quilt, the flint quilt frame, but I'm not sponsoring it either. I'm not making any monetary of this for the sewing machines or anything. It's just the love of sewing and quilting so from I still have a lot of um, quilts to finish here I've got all my batting um, all ready for all these quilts that I have and they're all down there just waiting for me to do them um, to create this is my loom right here this is a floor loom. It's compact and foldable. That's a whole different story. And the frame to hold it and my warping board and everything's over there. So thank you for joining me. Yes, I listen to music. I have my computer laptop up there. I have ample space everywhere I want to go in any room I want. <laughs> thank you for joining me. This is Joanne Gitron. I'm divorced now. I'm not a Polgarin. Um, 
things happen. So God bless you all. Thank you for listening and joining me on my journey to quilting and learning how to use this wonderful frame. God willing, someday I will be able to afford a Q-Zone frame. That's my long-term dream. And also purchasing a uh, sewing machine combo if possible for a quilt frame. So we'll see how that goes. And it will be right here and it's beautiful. I got a lot of room now. Thank you for joining me. Bye-bye.